Hi, my name is Ming Yao, and this is a demonstration of the Ansys AIM App Builder. App Builder is a great tool that allows you to record the actions of a particular workflow and save it as an app so others can follow along. In this case, we're going to do a simulation of a static structural analysis of a USB connector with nonlinear contacts. So this is the App Builder. I'm going to adjust my screen so that we can see both windows at the same time. I'm going to start by deleting the previous app that I've created. And we're going to create a brand new project. We'll call this project USB. The product will be AIM, and we'll be creating a brand new wizard so that people can follow along with the analysis. We'll give the name to the wizard here, and it'll be a four-step simulation. The nice part about the App Builder is that you can record the commands as you perform them in the GUI, and it'll create a script for you. So we're going to start recording. And then we can set up our simulation. We'll start by doing a static structural analysis by importing the geometry. We're going to skip contact detection and geometry modeling because this way we're going to simplify the problem a little bit. And we'll pick the model, our USB connector model here. You can see on the right hand side of the screen that the app builder is recording all of the actions that our GUI is performing. So the next step is to specify the static structural analysis and compute the fatigue results. Clicking on the finishing button here uh, executes the default template from ANSYS uh, AIM. We'll further customize this based on our setup. In this step, we've manually selected a file, but we can easily modify that by setting a add file open property. This gives us a graphical user interface input location where we can select the right geometry. And we just have to change the file path to link it to our XML GUI. So in the second step, we're going to set up the mesh and as well as the support and the loads. So let's get started here. I'm going to go to the mesh setting and adjust the global sizing. There are some small curvature radius, so we're going to turn on the curvature control setting and I'm going to set the curvature angle to 45 degrees. Generate the mesh. There's 37,000 nodes, which is a reasonably small model, so this will run in just a few minutes. Next, we'll set up our support and load location. We'll select this surface here for the fixed support. And this surface up here as our displacement. So the simulation will push the top piece inwards and to engage the collapse. So the displacement will be in the minus y direction. And we'll put a uh, we'll put in 6.5 millimeters. Now we can define a couple of scoping properties. Scoping properties are our selection, geometry selection that you can pass to the script. So we'll have one for support and the other one for load. And lastly, we want to insert uh, the amount of displacement. 
put a default value here of minus six millimeters to give people, give the users a example of what they should ins insert here. So then we can go down through the, the, the code here. We're gonna leave the, the meshing controls to, as default so that the users don't have to worry about the meshing. I'll select the support location here location and finally we'll also select the amount of translation and now we can go ahead and stop this recording as well Now in the third step, we're gonna start recording again, but what we wanna do is specify the contact locations. So under interface connections, I can select the contact locations. We need to define two sets of contacts. So this is contact site one, and we wanna select all the faces that could potentially come into contact during this simulation. So it's this surface here, and we'll select the other set of surfaces that can come in contact. So contacts here always happens in pairs, and we want to ensure that uh, we select all the possible surfaces for each pair. The contact behavior, we'll create a new one, call it frictionless. Now because the simulation is not linear, we need to modify our simulation progression. So under simulation progression here, we'll change it to adaptive, and some, set some larger numbers. Uh, this is not exposed in the GUI for the wizard that we're creating, so these will be set by default anytime anyone tries to run this particular wizard. Now we want to specify the location for our contact, contact site one as well as contact site two, and and link it to the script. Finally, we can go ahead and solve the simulation. But before we do that, we want to specify some additional post-processing definitions. We're going to select the contact, integration, and we're going to integrate the contact reaction in the Y direction at the contact. This tells us the insertion force of this connector, which is one of four you have in a USB. Now that the simulation has finished, we can look through our code. Because that builder is still in beta, there is missing a couple of features. Uh, we need to go into the code itself and not a couple lines just so that we can see the geometry. So we need to add a line that loads the contact event helper utilities. And find the location where after we up update the geometry, we want to import, we want to change the selection context so that the objects gets displayed. Once this is completed, we can start a brand new project.
Now, there are many options available from that builder. We can export our script in text format to change it using the text editor. We can export a binary file, or we can load it directly in uh, to the main application. So you can see by clicking on the, the little loading button, we, are, we execute our application directly. So here I'm doing the simulation again, but this time using a well-defined workflow based on what we just reported. You can see that the workflow GUI has changed. Here we're defining the support location, the load, and the displacement. The displacement is assumed to be in the minus Y direction. And next, we're asked to specify the contact locations. So again, we can simply pick the locations for the contacts. And we're done. Let's click on finish. We'll set up the whole model, run the simulation, including adding in the post processing. Once the simulation has been completed, we can review the results using the regular AIM GUI. Here we can take a look at the equivalent stress buildup as, we, as the insertion has been performed. So you can see the deformation of the spring. We can also look at the displacement magnitude, showing that the, the insertion piece has been inserted by 6.5 millimeters. Finally, we can review the reaction forces. And this was a quick demonstration of the ANSYS-AIM app builder on a nonlinear contact simulation. Thank you.